because if you're writing a novel or a play, you can just make stuff up. On YouTube, we don't really want to do that. So you've probably noticed, videos on YouTube sort of suck. We all know about plot lines. We all know about story arcs and character arcs. It's all the stuff that you learned in middle school. None of those things actually translate to you being a better storyteller on YouTube. And we believe this is the best video on YouTube about storytelling for YouTubers specifically, which we know is a very bold claim. So we're gonna make a little game out of it. If you end up agreeing with that by the end of this video, then give it a like. And if you disagree, then absolutely give it a dislike. And we are going to publish the dislikes in a pinned comment because you can't see that right on YouTube. To kick it off, step one in this framework is the recording stage. Now, you might think, why would you start with recording if we haven't even planned or prepped or done any of the other steps for this? Don't worry, we're gonna get there. You need to turn on the camera and start recording your entire journey long before you probably think you need to because so often what we find is that we will record a bunch of things and then the meat of the story sometimes happens before the real recording even started. It was that starting state. Okay, I think a perfect, not to cut you off, but I think yeah. a perfect example of that is Jake. Just the other day, he came into the office and he was practicing something to do on video later. And he said he was practicing so that when he was doing it on video, he wouldn't mess up. And I think that's a perfect example. Like the practicing is something that would be so valuable for people to see because people in real life mess up. But as video creators, and I think especially new video creators, we end up wanting to hide some of those things because we want to look like perfect or authoritative or like, like knowledgeable of what we're doing. Exactly, but that's the kind of stuff that ends up being the best part of the storytelling. Now, a really quick like tangible way to implement this on your own channel is to just consider your starting expectations and probably say them to the camera or at least write them down so that at the end of the video you can say, I expected this thing to go this way and maybe it exceeded your expectations or was completely different. This happened to me on my personal channel recently. I clearly stated that I didn't expect this thing to go very well and it went a lot better than I expected, which makes a much more interesting story than if it just went well and I said, okay, it went great. We know there's a lot that goes into this recording phase and don't worry, as we share some of these next steps, it's gonna make a lot more sense. So phase two is the adding variables stage. And I'm gonna just share an example right off the bat of YouTuber Michelle Kare. Michelle has a really cool channel where she goes out and tries new things all the time. In a recent video she did, she went and learned how to sail a pirate ship with some other YouTubers. So rather than scripting out the entire video, knowing exactly what the story would be, she said all she did was she like rented the pirate ship. She asked these YouTubers to come and do this collaboration with her. And then they said they were going to spend 48 hours on the boat to try and learn how to sail it. That's really all she did. But what that really means is she just provided the opportunity for things to happen. And I think that that's the key here. Even though that's like a really large scale example, when you're planning your videos, you need to plan and allow for things to happen. And sometimes you even need to add the variables in so that they can happen. Uh, maybe it's adding some stuff stakes to the videos or just little things. It doesn't have to be something as big as renting a pirate ship. Anywhere where you can just sprinkle in some chaos. Of course, you are not gonna be able to rent a pirate ship and have that much opportunity for chaos, but you might be able to have more than you think. And the crazy thing about this one is I find that it's not even something you have to add as often as it's something you have to intentionally not take away. Yeah. Nathan was saying earlier that he so often sterilizes his content on purpose because we're trying to control for things that might go wrong and prevent them from going wrong. Rather think, what if something goes wrong? That'd be cool. Let's hope it does and don't don't put up too many guardrails with your content. I think we're really, and I say we, like creators in general, we're, we're scared initially of uncontrolled situations because on camera, we want to present our best self. And I think that's very normal. In my case, it was that I knew that I didn't have a ton of time to do my videos. And if I added a bunch of these variables, then my videos would become a little bit more difficult to do, or like the storytelling would be better, but it would take longer to edit. And so I think I really sterilized the videos, not only out of fear, but also out of just the desire for a simplistic video even though in reality that just meant the video wasn't as good. Yeah, it might feel harder in the moment, but you're gonna get a better video out of it and it might come together easier so you'll save time in the edit. These get easier and easier as you go. If you do the first couple steps right, then steps three, four, five, they're gonna be all that much easier because you've kind of done the pre-work. So you've already got this awesome story setting up and forming all on its own. And so now we want to let those things happen. Don't hide it let them happen. Now that doesn't necessarily mean don't fix it because often a good story involves some conflict, another one of those cliches, which is okay, it's exciting, 
And naturally, sometimes you're going to have to fix the conflict. You're going to have to fix whatever problem arose, but you don't want to hide it. Don't throw away the footage. Don't throw away the video. Don't pretend like it didn't happen. I think that a lot of people think that it's going to make them look lame or it's going to make them feel like they don't know what they're doing to the audience. When in reality, all it does is it makes you super relatable. So I know that we've shared some examples so far of like big channels that have done really well at this, but I know there's some of you out there who are thinking, I just don't know how this applies to my small channel. Maybe you have an education channel where you're like, all I do is like give tutorials and things like that. This even applies to that sort of situation. I can't tell you how many times I've been doing something like a screen recording tutorial and my computer dies or the internet goes out or little things like that where someone walks into my office and then it's a little bit weird or awkward because I have to like stop the recording or they hear me talking to my own computer. Like there's these little weird things that happen that I would just want to cut out initially because it just doesn't feel like it quite fits. When in reality, people really appreciate the realness. And you don't want to keep all those things. It's all about highlighting and finding the right things. Yeah, I want you to notice how significant it is what he just said there. It's a tutorial video that Nathan used as an example. Whatever excuse you have, your video is not going to be more boring than a tutorial video. A screen recording, like, it doesn't get more boring than that. Maybe that's your content and that's okay. You can have helpful content. But if Nathan is able to find a way to add story into content like that, I promise you whatever your topic is, it's possible for you too. I think it's also important to realize you might have been thinking during my example, like how is that storytelling? That's not like moving the content forward. Sometimes storytelling isn't about moving the exact topic you're talking about forward. Sometimes the story is more about you as a creator or you, you know, over the course of multiple videos, people learning little things about you. We just did a video recently about persona and we talk about it there. Like there are multiple purposes of storytelling. Sometimes the story is really big and it takes up like 90% of the video. Sometimes the storytelling elements are small and it's one or 2% of the video, depending on the type of niche or channel that you have. It's figuring out the right amount to put in each video and a lot of times that just takes experimentation. Let's get into some examples. So a while ago I was researching for another video on this channel and I watched an obscene amount of Mr. Beast videos. It might have been every single video. I can't remember at least every video on his main channel and I was looking for patterns especially with storytelling. One thing that stood out to me is the way that he will kind of roll with the punches and it can be hard to tell with a channel that big how much of it is actually planned, but I think a lot of it isn't, and he monopolizes on those opportunities. Since then, he's come out with some newer videos, one of them being the viral Squid Games video, and I believe that video got more views than the Super Bowl that year. Yeah. It's insane. And in that video, somebody kind of broke the rules. He was playing this red light, green light game, and somebody had like a gotcha on when he accidentally said green light when he didn't mean to. He was like talking about the game, not actually trying to tell people to go and this guy like heard him and started booking it and Mr. Beast didn't take that out. He left it in and it's not just not taking it out. You have to realize with a creator like Mr. Beast, he has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of footage. So if something makes it into a video. It's not just that he didn't cut it. It's that he intentionally decided to highlight that among all the other footage. He thought that was not only okay to leave in, but the best piece of content. Yeah, I think it's this is really just looking at these things as opportunities. Yeah. Not only not bad, but actually a good thing. But this can apply to your channel too. I know these seem like really grandiose scenarios, but Nathan utilized this really well in his own smaller channel recently. Yeah, so on my on my latest video that I filmed, it was a challenge where I needed to turn like $5 into more money and then more money and more money. That was the whole premise of the challenge. Well, it turns out that the thing that I bought with my first $5, it didn't resell like I had planned for it to. And I was really scared that the whole challenge was over. I had waited two months for this thing to sell and it never did. Rather than scrapping the video, I realized that I could pivot and turn it into something that my audience would really like. It was how am I now going to recover from this loss? And now it was only five bucks. It's not that big of a deal, but on my channel where my audience knows I'm a cheapskate, they would realize that this was a big deal to me. And so the pivot that I made in that video, intentionally leaning into the failure of the challenge actually made the video way better than the initial premise. All right, so you've kind of documented your starting state. You put yourself in a really good position with a lot of variables hopefully, and you're letting the chaos ensue. You're letting things happen. Now, hopefully you have the majority of your filming done and you're ready to turn it into the story. I like this because this is where I really think the trick to storytelling on YouTube is so much different than 
every other storytelling advice you hear. Because if you're writing a novel or a play, you can just make stuff up. On YouTube, we don't really want to do that. So, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself though. We're not to that yet. Right now, we are just going to review what happened. And I want you to look back on the entire process and try to find the story. It might be different than you initially think. I have seen this happen so many times in my own videos where I think it's going to be one thing and then the actual story, the actual gems are something else. Sometimes it's a combination. Maybe the main thing that you plan for almost becomes a side story and it ties in to the other thing that you discovered is actually better. Here's an example. I was doing a challenge on one of my own videos and I was trying to focus on something and the ceiling started dripping just out of nowhere. I think it was maybe like the sprinkler system. I don't know, that's bizarre. But instead of showing where everything went wrong for every part of this challenge, the right thing to do in that scenario would be to lean into that one instance and really kind of emphasize how that was kind of representative of how things can just always go wrong, right? But in leaning into that instead of giving all these kind of mediocre examples, that one is really unique. That's a better thing to lean into. Now I really like what you said. I drew up a little picture here Beautiful. for you guys. I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully you can see that. So this is what your video should look like. Rather than just being like a flat line where you plan everything out and everything goes perfect exactly how you want it to go, you want it to be like a waveform. You want there to be high points. You want there to be low points. You want there to be points where the video is moving really fast and then spots where it really slows down. You want to show spots where maybe it's high emotion and you're really happy or excited. And then there's spots where you encounter something difficult or frustrating like water dripping on your desk during a study challenge. Like it's really the variability that actually makes the video so good. So during this phase, when you get to review everything you've done, whether that means actually physically reviewing the footage or just thinking back on everything that's happened, you're going to start identifying these high spots and these low spots and the fast spots and the slow spots. Um, like Dr. Seuss. Identified? Yeah. That's the word that yes. you need to hold on to. Yeah. And that's what nobody else is gonna tell you about storytelling. And that's why this video is so specific specific to YouTube. You're not constructing a story. You're not building a story the way you build a building. Right. You're investigating. You are a detective and you are investigating a scene that already happened and you are picking out the best parts of the story. You're more of a journalist of what happened during your journey, even for a talking head video yeah. where you didn't get any prior B-roll, I promise, rather than somebody that's writing a story. You can't write a story. And that's why we get stuck on this. It's so frustrating when you're trying to write an outline before you're filming and you're like, oh, what's the story? I know I'm supposed to do storytelling on YouTube. What's the story? The story hasn't happened yet. You can't fake it. You shouldn't fake it completely. This is really the key. I'm excited about this point. Okay, one more little secret. You can come a little closer with this one. So one thing that you always want to make sure you do is as you review this, you're going to start getting excited like we are about this phase because it's this is where the story like really begins to form. Always leave the audience with less than you think they need. You want to keep them guessing. You want to keep them wanting more. If you give them too much upfront because you're super excited about all these really cool things that happened or the high, all the high points and all the low points, all of a sudden your video doesn't give them a reason to stay. All of a sudden it's just all the highs or just all the lows. You need to pick and choose very carefully the things that you bring into the video and only focus on a few of those really high points. I know for me it's really hard to do this because you have to eliminate some really good stuff but that's part of the beauty of storytelling. It's painful. And with this video, we're going to be cutting out a lot. Some of it we might cover on our podcasts, mm -hmm. but we know we have to do this, even though some of it is more helpful. But being extra helpful is not necessarily worth it if our channel doesn't grow and then we don't reach as many people. Now, we were realizing when we were trying to like put this into our outline and put this into our video and we're like, what if they don't get this? Like, this is a tricky skill that takes time to develop. And you can think you got it right, you can think you found the right story, but how do you know? I think you really just have to practice. Yeah. And we do this. Once we've published videos on our own channels or even on this channel, we will go back later and say, how could that have been better? How could we have told the story better? Yeah. And you can go back through all of your old videos, even if you have no intention of remaking them, or even better if you do, and just ask yourself, where was the story there? Even with your drive to work this morning or your day yesterday or your last vacation, see if you can tell yourself a story of what happened, even if it seems mundane. If you're saying there was no story in this, it probably was. You probably just haven't found it yet. Now, at the beginning of this video, I did say that storytelling videos on YouTube suck. 
there was one that actually stood out to me, and it was a clip of Colin and Samir interviewing Marquez Brownlee from MKBHD. And in this interview, they were talking about how storytelling is important. And Marquez said that he didn't feel like he could tell stories on his channel the way that like Mr. Beast did. Colin and Samir both said, well, actually, we're going we're gonna to have to disagree because there are some things about even tech reviews, which is what Marquez Brownlee does, that people want to be there for the story, even if they have no intention of purchasing that tech. And as Marquez thought about it, he realized that in his videos, he always focuses on the tech that is really awesome and amazing or the tech that really sucks because that's the type of stuff that people want to see. And so you can apply that same thing to your videos. Focus on those things that are really awesome in your video and the things that kind of really sucked about your video and then everything in the middle, all that mundane stuff, you can chop so much of that out. But that video was really inspiring to me as we were planning this video and it really stood out. Now that you've reflected, you'll be ready to start the edit. The funny thing is that this is our fifth step of the process, but so many people don't think about storytelling until they're already in the edit. So many people start here. This is kind of the final thing, and it should be easy if you've done the other four steps well. Now, this means that you're going to kind of embellish and dramatize the right spots in the edit. You might add some B-roll later, but you don't necessarily have to, especially if you started recording early and often, like we said in step one. You are really emphasizing certain parts and making them seem bigger than they were in some cases if they are the best parts of the video, but that doesn't mean that that drama is completely fake or fabricated, you're just choosing what to emphasize. Yeah. Okay, I think I have a really good example. Let's show these guys. Okay, we have all this art in this office here. Well, I mean, you guys can see this one here. Like, do we really think that this looked like that? Like, this is a beautiful painting of a mountain that's just amazing. But like, you can tell, like there's editing that's going on. Like the sky is perfect. The sun's in the right place. Like it was, it's been clearly worked on. But as a viewer of this piece of art, I'm not offended by that. I know that it didn't look like that in real life. I mean, look at any of these paintings on this wall, or not paintings, these are photographs. Any of these photographs, like they literally look picture perfect actually. And the reason why that's okay is because it's art. I know that if I go to this place or out to that dirt biking place, like it's not going to look like that but it's still beautiful. It's a piece of art. And so by embellishing or bringing out the highs of the highs or the low of the lows in your video, it's not that you're lying or deceiving your audience. It's that you're bringing together the best pieces of your story so that they can see and feel just a little bit of what it was like for you to go through that journey. Okay, guys, it's time to cast your vote on if this was the best storytelling video on YouTube. Okay, wait, before they cast their votes, I have one more tip. This might just put you over the edge if you aren't quite convinced. So in this video, we talked about creating storyline on a video by video basis, which is amazing. I think that that's something that's so important that are gonna keep people retained on your video. That's super important. Something else that's really key that we just barely touched on is how important it is for there to be this overarching storyline on your channel. I just gave the example to Julia. If I hiccuped while I was, or burped or whatever, something weird on camera, I could choose to leave that in rather than cutting it out. Is that a story in my video? Not really, but what if part of my storyline or my character development on my channel is that I'm getting more comfortable on camera and I want to be more likable to my audience or I want you to feel more like a peer than like I'm presenting to you. It's little things like that that may not feel like a story on your channel, but it really ties in closely to persona and how you want to show yourself on camera. And that really helps determine your overall story on your channel. Go check out that video that we have about persona. But before you do that, don't forget to vote.